there's a term, a phrase you'll hear quite often when it comes to war and starting a war. You'll hear that war happens when politics fail. So a breakdown in conversation results in immediate action. That's what it is. And what is war? In truth, a war is a continued long series of battles with an outcome for the victor to gain something in the spoils, the desired goal. So you can go to war with a lot of things as long as a continuous series of battles, whether it is verbal or whatnot, and so long as someone achieves an objective. But it's not a war if the casualties only happen on one side. That's an invasion. That's what that is. That's a slaughter. So what you'll hear is, as I stated in the opening, is war is when politics fail. But the truth is, war is when politics succeed. See, used to be that way. Now it's when politics succeed. Politics is not about anything special other than how do we continue to go the public into disliking each other's views with one hating each other so much that they'll support ours despite how bad it is for them and everyone else. That's all politics is. How do you do that? So you bring up lots of things. It doesn't matter if it's race, the economy, you have to make a boogeyman. You have to make something that the other side fears so much that they're willing to give up any and everything that they have to stop it. So when you have Republicans and Democrats who want war, they will go to their base. They don't need the base. I don't know if any of you have ever noticed this, but when it comes to politics, they've never needed a base. They never needed the support of the people. And the proof of that is simple. How many laws are made without us asking for them? How many rules are made and changed without us demanding it? People forget how government works. We the people make the demand. Government makes sure that whatever we demand doesn't infringe on others. If it does infringe on others' freedoms and against the Constitution, then it is either negotiated into something that is, that is workable for a compromise or it is scrapped altogether and explained this cannot work because of these reasons. That's all it is. The children ask for something and the parents say yes, no, maybe so, depending upon. That's how it should work. That's not how it is working. So right now, since Venezuela, the coup failed, now the United States wants to go to Iran and threaten with a battleship. Just is basically the same as I didn't get what I wanted in high school. I didn't get what I wanted. So I'm angry. I'm a big bully. So what I'm going to do is on Friday after six period, when everyone wants to get to the bus to go home or get to their ride and go home or whatever they're going to do, I'm going to stick my foot out in the, in, in, in the hallway and say, I dare someone to step on my shoe. Whoever do is going to catch it. That's what's happening. That's all the U.S. has ever done. And there's a goal. The goal is the oil. The goal of other minerals and resources that we just don't have that much of in the U.S., mainly because big donors don't want their land pumped for it. Enough uh, upper class whether it be the lowest end or the highest end of middle class, they say, no, we don't want this here. Take it somewhere else. Since that's happening, and you know, there's constitutional rights, land laws, and things like that that the U.S. should not, but yet have violated when minorities are involved, then they have to go overseas. They would go overseas anyway. But that's the point. The wars are started for resources. Resources that would have probably, if there were no politics, and they were just statesmen. There were people doing their job on behalf of the citizens, on behalf of the United States, and not on behalf of the industrial military complex. Then maybe there would have been negotiations made 
and everyone would get what they want with no one being hurt. Because in all honesty, I, if I were president, if I were a lawmaker, if I was someone that was able to vote for or against a war, there's no way I could possibly vote for any kind of infraction on any human being's life that results in death or mass death to those who have done nothing to anyone. I couldn't stomach it. And the fact that we have these grown people in there that do know better but don't care because they'd rather get the money instead of doing what's right, doing what's best, and having empathy. We all have to suffer. Every one of us has to suffer knowing that everyone around the world hates us. We're entitled, we're spoiled, we have first world problems. We don't get what we want, so we throw a tantrum. We elect dumbass after dumbass, racist after racist. You know, that's what the world see. That's what we do. We vote in the image of the United States of America. That's what we vote in. And it's time that we stop trying to be perfect and get the perfect guy. And it's time that we stop voting for hatred to get the worst guy. We need the guy that's legitimately who he is, what he is, what she is, who she is, what they are. It doesn't matter. Get the right person to represent us. Not a lie, no con, no racism. Do what's best for the country. Simple as that. If it's not positive, it's not being done. If it's not against hate, then what the hell is the point? It needs to be against hate. It needs to be for something positive, And it needs to be something that can be done now. Not in the next 10, 20, 30 years when people are going to forget about it in the next six months. It needs to be now. All these wars can happen now. It's happening in days for the hundreds of trillions of dollars. I'm just saying. Okay, maybe not hundreds of trillions. I'll retract that. Definitely 1.3 to 1.7 trillion dollars every year. And yet, when they ask for things that are positive, it's where you're going to get the money. I want you all to think about that. These are grown people doing this. They know better. And they're not acting accordingly. And that's why they're stupid. This is Cedric Kennedy for Comparative Reasoning. Thank you for listening.